Uh, in my line of work, I constantly get asked about coffee. Now, half of the world wakes up to coffee every single morning, and we get loads of questions. Is coffee good for my health? Is coffee bad for, your, for, for my health? Now, it really depends. There's no point labeling a particular beverage as good, as, as good or bad unless it's really creating a problem. Now, there's, a, there's the right way to have coffee, and there's the wrong way to have coffee. What we need to understand that coffee is a powerful antioxidant, and it does have its place when it comes to protecting someone from type 2 diabetes, when it comes to protecting someone from Parkinson's, liver disease, even liver cancer, and improving heart health. But this doesn't mean that you just go and keep on drinking water without changing your lifestyle, thinking it's going to protect your liver and protect you from type 2 diabetes and all of these things. We can, say, we can say the same thing about salads. People keep on eating salads all through the day and yet they're sick because they don't exercise, they don't look at their stress levels, they don't look at their sleep and recovery. So health is so much more than just a particular beverage or food or a superfood promising you great health. Now, coffee, like I said, is a powerful antioxidant. Yes, it has several health benefits. It can also be detrimental to your health when you use it the wrong way. Coffee is a stimulant. Yes, it has the power to induce thermogenesis and lipolysis in your body, which is why most fat burners, fat loss supplements, and all these supplements which are sold over the Internet promising fat loss have a high amount of caffeine. That's why certain drinks that you have in the bar, okay, which... Uh, I'm not going to mention the name right now, but it's red in color and it also has an animal attached to the name of the drink. But all I can say is that that's pumped with so much of caffeine to make you feel so good when you party even though you've had a tired day. Because no one really sleeps and goes to a club rested to party. Everyone's already tired and that's why you have stimulants in clubs to make you dance more, make you drink more and make you eat more. I'm not against clubbing, I'm just against the way people use stimulants to sustain themselves throughout the day. <clears throat> so, yep, coffee is a great stimulant. It also has an ergogenic aid to the body. It acts as an ergogenic aid. What I mean by that is it can stimulate your endurance. So a lot of people have a shot of coffee before their workout, and I actually support that if coffee suits you because it does act as a stimulant. It does give you a lot of energy. It increases your cortisol and adrenaline, so you can have a very, very productive workout. But you also got to be careful that coffee is a diuretic and it can dehydrate you. So if you're not drinking sufficient water during your workout after having coffee, that can work against you as well. But anyway, today's whole point of the video is to talk about so many, so many people who wake up to a cup of coffee every single day. Now, like I said, this is not to stop you from drinking coffee, but there's a right way and a wrong way. When you consume coffee on an empty stomach, okay, it is detrimental to your health. It stimulates the production of hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Now, we all need hydrochloric acid in your stomach because your stomach needs a pH of about 3, which is highly acidic. Because when you have the right amount of stomach acid, it basically breaks down and fights out all the bacteria, all the viruses and pathogens in your food. And your food in your stomach best gets assimilated in an acidic medium. Which is why I keep telling people it's not just about alkaline, alkaline, alkaline all the way. Yep, we know cancer cells breed in an acidic environment and you need to make your body alkaline. Yep, you've got to change the alkaline level of your body but not your stomach. Because your stomach needs to be acidic to actually protect you. Anyway, coming back to coffee. So when you drink coffee on an empty stomach, number one, you stimulate the production of hydrochloric acid in an empty stomach. And now this is dangerous because the hydrochloric acid has no food to act upon because your stomach is empty. So it starts eating into the mucosal linings of your stomach. And that's how we get stomach ulcers, that's how we get heartburn, that's how we get indigestion, bloating, flaculence, and then it leads to things like IBS, a weak gut lining, which is a leaky gut syndrome, autoimmune disorders from Hashimoto's to everything that's autoimmune, fibromyalgia, you name it, joint pain, arthritis, everything. So this one little habit that people are doing for years and years because we wake up, we want that coffee because we want to feel stimulated, we want to feel energetic and ready to take on the day because we've probably not had a good night of rest, we had less sleep, we had disturbed sleep. So we depend on a stimulant to wake us up and keep us going for the first few hours of the day. Now even decaffeinated coffee has the same ability to produce this acidic level in your body and damage your mucosal linings of your stomach. Plus, doing it on an empty stomach will also interfere with the absorption of calcium and iron into your body. And we all know the importance of elemental calcium and iron to maintain your immunity, your bones, and several other functions in the human body. Now, what happens when you take coffee? What happens? 
Uh, coffee is a stimulant. It stimulates your adrenal glands. The caffeine stimulates your adrenal glands to produce more cortisol and adrenaline. This increases your heart rate. This increases your blood pressure. So for people who have high blood pressure and wake up to coffee or do these multiple coffees through the day on an empty stomach, it is detrimental to their pressure, their heart health, and of course, cortisol again, your stress hormone. So think about it. Here we are trying to reduce the amount of cortisol being produced in our body at an elevated level, but here we are taking a stimulant which is just doing the opposite to make us feel good. It's making us feel good and energetic, but it's putting more stress, more of the stress hormone into the human body. So now you have elevated stress levels because you have enough of stress in your life and now you have more caffeine-induced stress in your body. Higher cortisol, lesser testosterone, which means more body fat and less muscle mass. Lesser thyroxine, which means a possible thyroid problem, which millions of people are suffering in the world. So am I telling you to stop your coffee? No, I'm telling you to do it the right way. Wake up, hydrate, have your water, have your water with lemon if, you can, if your lemon suits your body. Have a fruit, line your stomach, and then after a couple of minutes, you can have your cup of coffee. So there's nothing wrong with coffee, like I said. Now, there are a lot of people who give up coffee, and there are a lot of people that we advise not to have coffee because these people already have extremely acidic bodies. And adding coffee to the human body when you're extremely acidic just doesn't help with immunity, the prevention of disease, or even the healing of disease. And then you have the wrong coffees which are made with whipped cream and immense amounts of sugar and high corn fructose and then you add the little vanilla flavor or the cinnamon flavor syrups which is nothing but high, but high corn fructose syrup. And not only do you have caffeine and more acid levels but you have more of the wrong sugar destroying your gut, inflaming your gut, destroying your digestion, reducing the good bacteria and the microbiome of your body. So you see this one little thing can cause innumerable problems if it's not done the right way. Plus, most people grab coffee on the go. Look at America, look at India for that matter. You have lines of people waiting to grab their coffee and then they're running to work, they're driving to work. So you're also consuming coffee when you're already stressed. So you have high cortisol levels. And now you're adding to more cortisol levels with the caffeine that you're taking. You know, make time, enjoy your coffee, sit down. Like you have your piece of fruit, have your lemon water, and sit down, enjoy your coffee. Because when you enjoy your coffee, you're in the rest and the digest system. You're in the parasympathetic nervous system where digestion is elevated. But if you're in the, in the sympathetic nervous system, which is fight and flight, and you're grabbing a coffee on the go and running to work, already stressed, you're just building more and more elevated levels of cortisol. And that goes against everything, everything that you're trying to achieve when it comes to health. Now, here's the story of models and actresses and a lot of thin and beautiful looking people with fit bodies that constantly drink water because they're trying to suppress their appetite. It is true that coffee, caffeine in the blood will suppress your appetite, but that's the worst way for you to lose weight. All these models will project that figure of having coffee and eating less and great bodies, but they have such extremely acidic bodies because they're not going to show you the, that part of their life. But I get to see all that at the end spectrum of what I do. They have ulcers, they have IBS, they have depression, anxiety issues, because we know caffeine, too much of caffeine causes anxiety and jitters. And then, you know, you're, you're all energetic and high, and then the caffeine reduces and you have this crash. And you feel depressed and sad and fatigued, full of brain fog, and then you need your next fix. So you reach out for another cup of coffee, or you reach out for an, another, uh, another cup of tea. Like I said, I'm not against this. But introspect in your life, are you that kind of person who's moving from one cup to another just to keep you going? Because I may constantly talk about how conventional medicine only suppresses the symptom. It's not just medicine, it's things like coffee, which is suppressing a symptom of your fatigue. It's not letting you correct your lifestyle and behavior because you have less sleep and a coffee is letting you get through the day doesn't mean you're healthy. If you need a stimulant to keep you going throughout the day, you're either malnourished, you don't have the right nutrition to support your energy naturally, you don't have the right amount of sleep, you have too much of stress levels, you can't handle the emotional stress and physical stress in your life, and that's why you need a stimulant to get you through the day. So like I said, coffee may not be bad for you. If there's a good way of having it, there's the wrong way of having it. I love coffee. I just don't have it because it makes me extremely high. It makes me extremely energetic. I feel over happy and I don't like that false sense of happiness that's caused by coffee. I want to see if I can be happy without having a stimulant. But I enjoy my cup of coffee. I love it. I just don't have it because when the crash hits, boom, I need more coffee. I need more sugar. I need more stimulants to keep me going. 
So introspect into your life. If that coffee suits you, there are many people who can have coffee and sleep. You may think that's a great thing, but you don't want to go to sleep with an acidic body. That's the time your body's going to go through detoxification, clean you out and all of that stuff. So there's a right way and a wrong way. Introspect into your life and you decide. But when you're dry fasting, when you're fasting, so many people, in fact, America changed the way of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is only water through your fast. They added coffee because half of America, I shouldn't say America, half of the world is addicted to coffee. So to make people to be able to do the fast, they're allowing one cup of coffee. How detrimental is that? When you're fasting, your body's cleaning itself, trying to clean out acids. And here you go, putting a glass of coffee in a body that is trying to be clean, as adding more and more acidic levels, negating the entire effect of your fast. Fasting is fasting. We don't change it. We either change our mindsets, we get strength from inside to really do it. And as everyone can see, dry fasting is really, really easy now. But we don't do it the wrong way. A fast is a fast. You abstain from food, you abstain from water. It's as simple as that. If you think you're allowed coffee and tea, and a lot of people say, fine, you can have a cup of tea and coffee in your fast, you're mistaken. Now, for a lot of you out there, I know you're trying to break your coffee addiction. The most powerful way to break your coffee and your tea addiction, that's if you want to do it, okay, is dry fast for three days. 16 hours of dry fasting, and then eat for eight hours, fast again for 16 hours, dry, no water, no food. I can promise you, all those cravings will disappear. Most people have already broken their coffee addictions and tea addictions that way. You can do it if you want to do it. If you don't want to and coffee is the most important part of your day and you love it, that's great because it's making you happy. Do it, but do it the right way. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.